So what did we do last session? We learned about ResNets. We learned how to make them more efficient and go even deeper by arranging batch no ReLU weight properly and having no nonlinearity or, line or linear operations on the main branch, on the shortcut branch. And then we learned about wide residual networks. So far, everybody wanted to go deeper. These papers said, wait a minute, maybe we can go even wider and actually get more efficiency. Maybe there is no need to go 1,001 uh, layers deep. Maybe it's just enough to go wider and less deep rather than having 164. Maybe it's enough to have 40 layers deep, but make things four times wider. And the next contribution in the literature over ResNet is what is called ResNext. This, you, this term you're gonna hear a lot. And that's basically this paper. It says aggregated residual transformation for deep neural networks. Let's see what the idea is. The plot on the left is a bottleneck block in a residual network. So let's say a 256 dimensional, basically that's the number of your channels, uh, feed, a 256 dimensional feature map goes in, then you do a one by one convolution, you project a dimension down from 256 to 64. Now this three by three convolution is now cheaper because you are doing it from a lower dimension to another lower dimension, and then you blow up the dimension. You go back to 256, and then you add your input to your output, and then you continue. That's what we learned about in the ResNet paper. Now we want to go even make things even more efficient by excessively using one by one convolutions. What you can do is you can break down the first matrix to be from 256, it's a one by one convolution, and it's gonna give you four outputs. And then you can have 32 of them, 32 paths. I'm gonna tell you why 32 pretty shortly, but for now you have 32 paths like that. So you're breaking down your matrix. Then you take the outcome and you do a four by four matrix multiplication and then you have a convolution, three by three. So four by four matrices are really cheap to compute. And now we are breaking down our problem. Then you have 32 of those four by four matrix, matrix multiplications. So these are gonna be really fast and you have 32 of them. The outcome is gonna be a four dimensional thing which you can blow out the dimension to be 256 by a one by one convolution. You can do the same thing for all of your 32 path. Now you can add them up. What you can do is now you take the input, add it back to the resulting operations that you had here, and that's gonna be the output. So this one is much more efficient compared to a regular residual block. You have this, you have uh, fewer flops, basically floating point op operations, and 32 is chosen such that these two blocks have the same number of parameters because you want to be fair when you're comparing them. So they have similar number of parameters and that's why they choose 32, but this one is much more faster because now you're doing small matrices, matrix multiplications. And even this one, it's for the dimension of the matrices that you're using here is four by 256, which is much better than 64, 256. So that's one change. Whatever that I'm gonna show you to the right of this plot is just equivalent formulations. And I'm gonna tell you why they are equivalent. The first operations are the same. You're just breaking down your matrix. This operation is the same as you have over here. Now you can make a slight change. Rather than doing multiplication right now, you can concatenate all of these. That's gonna give you a matrix that is one, 28, which is basically 32 times four. That's 128 dimensional. And you have this many outputs. So you first concatenate them and then you multiply by a matrix like this. What is happening is you take the channel wise, you take the output of these operations and then you concatenate them. And that's gonna give you uh, 32 times 
4, which is 128 channels after this concatenation operation. Now you can do a one by one convolution and then continue with your residual network. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna go into more details of why this is the case, why this one and why A and B are equivalent. For now, let's just take my word for its face value. Now see, let's see what happens from B to C, why they are equivalent. What you can do is you take these matrices and then you can concatenate them together. That's gonna give you 256 by 128 matrices. And then the operation that you see here, those 32 is just a group convolution. So that's just the definition of a group convolution. From here to here, we are just using a definition. And can somebody tell me where we saw group convolutions? The first place that we saw it. Maybe I didn't use the word, but we saw it somewhere. We saw it actually in the first paper that we considered, the ImageNet paper. So this is just a group convolution. This is one group, this is another group. Actually, that's a group convolution. Each of these operations that you're seeing is a group convolution. They were doing it because at that time their GPUs were not so powerful. So they had to break their network into two groups, but now we are just doing it for efficiency. So we saw group convolutions before, and that's just a definition. Going from B to C is just a definition. Professor, sorry if I missed this, but where did the 32 come from? 32 is, uh, you want this network, this block of the network to have the same or similar, it's not gonna be exactly the same, or a similar number of parameters to the ResNet. Okay, cool. This number could be anything, but then if you go into details of uh, the number of parameters that you're gonna have, then you're gonna see that the number of parameters of this block is equivalent to the number of parameters of the other block. I see. So 32 is coming from that. It cool. could be Thank any you. number, but yeah. Now the question is how do you go from A to B? Why are they equivalent? Let's make things simple and let's just look at matrix vector multiplications. You have a bunch of vectors, actually you have 32 of them after this operation that are gonna be four dimensional. So XIs are gonna be four dimensional. WIs in, in panel A are 256 by four dimensional stuff, matrices. So it's 256 by four and you're multiplying it by a vector that's in R4. And the addition here, you're just adding, adding them all up. So that's what you're doing here. Panel B, you're just taking everything, the output of these convolutions and you're concatenating them. You have 32 of them. Each one of them is four dimensional. So you get a vector in R128 after the concatenation. The rest of it is just multiplying it by a matrix, which you are blocking it, which you are breaking it this way. So that's gonna be your entire matrix, which is this one by one convolution sitting here. So that's a big matrix being multiplied by a big vector. This is the summation of a bunch of small matrices being multiplied by small vectors. So the outcomes are equal. So A and B are equivalent. Is this clear? Do you have any questions? So A and B are equivalent because of this equality. B and C are equivalent because of a definition of group convolutions. So that's just a definition. So ResNext is gonna use group convolutions. So where else did we see this? behavior when we were splitting and then transforming and merging. This is called split transform merge strategy. We saw it in first in Google Net, inception, exactly. So that's where we saw it. You first split, then you do a transformation. It was either three by three, five by five, seven by seven, pooling, whatever. You do some transformation and then you merge them using concatenation. So this is strategy is familiar. We saw it before. We actually saw it even earlier than that. So you asked me about what is cardinality. Cardinality is this 32 number, the one that we chose to be 32. This is the size of the set of transformation that we are doing. It's basically the number, the total path that you have. So that's just a definition of cardinality. That's what we are going to use. 
So now what parameters do we have? We have the filter size is a hyperparameter. We have the depth of our neural network could be a hyperparameter. The width of it could be a hyperparameter, basically the number of channels. And now cardinality, the number of group convolutions that you are gonna use is another hyperparameter that you can play around with. But we saw the idea of split, transform and merge, even in the essence of neural networks, even in a simple neural neuron, you have an out, you have an input X, which is a vector with entries X1, X2, X3 up until XD. So it's D dimensional. You do a dot product of that D dimensional vector by your weights and the dot product has the addition inside it implicitly and then you get a neuron out. Even there, you have the idea of split transform and merging. Let's see how. That's a neuron we just saw. It's inner product of two vectors. That's our X, D dimensional. We first split it. You take X and then you split it according to its coordinates. That's gonna give you X1 up until XD. That's the idea of split, transform. You do a linear transformation. You multiply it by a weight and then you merge or aggregate, which is a summation. That's why the idea of ResNet, you can think of it as a network in neuron. What are your networks? Your networks are these smaller paths and you have 32 of them. You first split, you take X, you split it, and then you transform it. This could be a nonlinear or linear transformation. And then you aggregate and see again is your cardinality. And then we are adding a residual connection by just copying and adding our input. And let's take a look at the actual structure of a ResNet. This is ResNet, this we saw before. So I want to remember these structures. In some of the future papers, we are gonna say, we are gonna use the features coming out of Conv5. So it's a good idea to remember that ResNet 50 or even ResNet 101 have con 5 or con 4. We are gonna use that terminology. 32 is chosen such that ResNet 50 and ResNext 50 have the same number of parameters. So they have almost the same number of parameters. This one is 25.5 million. This one is 25 million. And they have similar flops also. But then the difference is that ResNext is training much better. It's training faster and it's giving you a lower top one error and lower top five error. This is ResNet 50 and ResNext 50 being compared. And these are ResNet and ResNext 101. This one has 101 layers. Any questions? The change that you are making is replacing these bottleneck layers with group convolutions. So your convolutions are now going to be group convolutions. And you have 32 of them. Is everything clear? Any questions before I move to the next topic? Okay, perfect.